Hey folks, welcome back to Honey Money SG. Now, if you want to invest in China businesses and China company stocks, one of the best ways is actually to buy their stock tickets in the Hong Kong exchange. Some of the more common China company names that we do know about is like Alibaba, Tencent, Meituan, all these big companies, right? Growing really large in China. But you do know that if you're not really great in stock picking, you can also buy the index, right? There is even the Hang Seng Tech Index, which has fallen more than 50% from its all-time highs. So it may be a really good time for value investors to go and pick up some bargain. Of course, that's not financial advice, but you know, I'm not the best person to really discuss about China or Hong Kong stocks. So let me welcome a special guest to really share his thoughts about the China and Hong Kong market. All right, so today we have our special guest, Chi King from the Te Chi King channel, right? So Chi King, I really want to ask you because right. I really do not have a very good knowledge of this. Why should we really invest in China or Hong Kong markets or stocks? Okay, maybe um, just a, a brief background, right? If you really want to talk about China, investing in China, there are a few key factors that you want to look at. Um, there is the Shenzhen Exchange, there's the Shanghai Exchange, and then more importantly, there's the Hang Seng Index that uh, more Singaporeans are, are familiar with. So I think, um, broadly speaking, a lot of all the US companies or US listed Chinese companies like your Alibaba, your um, JD, your Pintoto, and even Tencent, which is over the counter, um, those are more um, um, focused with the Hang Seng Index. Then if you really look into China specifically, um, you have your, your Mao Tai, your, your liquor company, you have Ping An Insurance. So these are listed under AHS. So then begs the question, why should anyone be interested in investing in China? We have so many great companies in the US, and even arguably, some of the Singapore local companies are, are quite strong in, uh, in terms of fundamentally. But I think um, there, are, there are a few key factors. I'm not here to argue that China is the superior being and, and Chinese is the superior race. But that being said, I believe there are a lot of you who are exposed to the um, um, US market itself. Um, in every market, there are opportunities and there are always risks involved. Mm -hmm. And how you're going to hedge the risk, I think that's up, up for you to decide. Because ultimately, you are the steward of your own portfolio. Um, that being said, of course, um, for some people that are interested in hedging some of the downside risk in the US market, and especially when um, there is this entire idea that is floating in the YouTube space today, um, a lot of people are talking about changing world order. What mm. happens if um, Renminbi takes over um, the petrodollar? Or what, if, what happens if the uprising of China happens to be able to um, inculcate and to imbue new technologies that even surpass the United States? So these are the uncertainties that people don't wish to talk about, but I think um, the risk is here and there are definitely um, certain opportunities that um, investors are able to take, take advantage of. So, so that, is, that is really how you should um, refrain yourself from thinking, oh, oh yeah, true, a CCP, it's autocratic, um, it's a lot more authoritarian, um, sometimes rule of law can be argued. But that being said, some of the risks, um, China do have a certain degree of risk, but I think we cannot discount that US also have that certain degree of risk. So mm. they are supposed to complement and maybe hatch each other up in, in that instance. So maybe you want to recommend to the viewers what are some ETFs or index funds that they should look at if they are not willing to invest in individual stocks? Sure. Um, I, I'm glad you asked. So actually, um, even though on my YouTube channel, I, I do describe fundamentally on just a few companies in, in China specifically, but I think for, for common folks or for people that don't want to spend too much time um, looking into specific companies, right? Buying a broad-based ETF is the best way to go because you actually diversify away a lot of all the idiosyncratic risk that is prevalent to only one company. So I, I did some of my research and I looked into a few ETFs. There are two specific markets, right? Hong Kong and China specifically. So for the Hong Kong market, I think you can look at just MSCI Hong Kong index. Um, that index usually just track um, Hong Kong large cap stocks. Um, but that being said, I'm personally not invested and I'm not really interested in, in that particular index because uh, only two companies um, hold a huge part of the index. So it's AIA, which is the insurance company, and the Hong Kong Exchange itself. Um, they hold around 35% of the entire index weight itself. If you really want to look at a more diversified approach, maybe you want to look at um, something that is uh, more, more tech-focused. If, let's say, um, for those of you who actually do follow the new recent um, um, Chinese crackdown, you talk about your Alibaba, your Tencent, your Meituan, um, you can also look into KWEB, which is a, a Chinese um, tech-focused fund where it only holds all these tech companies. So that's specifically for Hong Kong. So for those of you who are not interested in Hong Kong at all, um, you don't want to touch all these tech companies, you want the brick and mortar, you want the normal um, A shares listed stocks, you can also look into some pure play A shares ETF. I think the iShares Core CSI 300 is an interesting play. Um, they actually track 300 of the largest A shares listed stocks in China. So um, they, they allocate based on market cap and in terms of liquidity. So if you're quite, you have your Mao Tai, you have your Ping An, um, you have all those um, bigger, uh, more stable, you can say some of them might be affiliated to the mm. government because it's in the strategic interest of the Chinese government to have 
um, their insurance arm to have um, a lot of their their, their, their fundamental um, companies that lead the economy. And uh, likewise, if you really want to draw comparisons to Singapore, it really feels a lot like Singapore, where um, the, the, the government and, and private institutions have strategic interests to align themselves. And um, last but not least, I think one other ETF is really um, the Emerging Market ETF. I think EIMI is, is a very interesting pick. They have 28% exposure in China and 17% in Taiwan. And the rest is like India, South Korea and stuff like that. So that is, they also have a relatively um, small expense ratio. So I think that's, that's um, some of the index picks that I will um, talk about or look into if, if you're interested in uh, emerging markets or China by and large. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Chicken, for your insights. And with that, let's get back to the video. So thank you to my special guest. With that, if you really want to invest in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, you have to choose the right broker, right? And that's the purpose of this video. I'm going to select and review some of the brokers that you can invest in Hong Kong Exchange so that you can make a better decision of which broker to go for to reduce your cost and meet your investment objectives. So let's start off with the assumptions first. Let's assume that the current exchange rate between Singapore dollars and Hong Kong dollars is 1 Singapore dollars to 5.77 Hong Kong dollars. So we will be using this exchange rate for fixed calculations. And I'm going to use the example of buying one bot lot, which is 100 units of 10 cent shares, ticker 700 HK in Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And I'm going to base the price at 380 Hong Kong dollars for each unit of 10 cent shares. So 100 units of it will be 38,000 Hong Kong dollars. And that's closely equivalent to 6.6 thousand Singapore dollars. Now I'm going to exclude some of the regulatory fees involved when you're trading Hong Kong stocks because those are the same for the various brokers. Whether you choose a certain broker or not, the regulatory fees will be the same. So I'm going to just talk about the raw commission fees or the platform fees that each broker may incur. But if you want to refer to the regulatory fees, then you can refer to this image that I captured from one of the brokerage. Let's start off with my first broker of today, Mumu by Futu Limited. Now I talk about Mumu many times, right, including my stock brokers review. Now Mumu also engages in Hong Kong Stock Exchange if you want to invest in the stock market. The commission fee is as such is 0.03% multiplied by the transaction amount minimum of 3 Hong Kong dollars per order. And there is a platform fee which is fixed at 15 Hong Kong dollars per order. So if you're using my example of buying 110 cent shares at 380 dollars, that means 0.03 multiplied by 38,000. Adding on to the $15 platform fee would give you a total of $26.40 Hong Kong dollars for just the commission and platform fees. And if we convert that back to Singapore dollars, that will be $4.60, effective rate to be around 0.07%. But the advantage of using Moomoo is that you can actually buy odd lot trading, which means you don't need to buy up to 100 shares. There is actually odd lot trading available on the Moomoo app or Moomoo trading platform. So that is the advantage if you really don't want to shelve out so much money, like a 6.6 .6 Singapore dollars per trade, you know, that's quite a large amount for some people. So if you haven't signed up for Moomoo yet, you can use my refer link down below to get one free stock depending on what is the promotion offer right now for the next contender we have tiger brokers right which is a direct competitor to mumu tiger brokers will charge you 0.03 percent of commission based on the trade value with a minimum of seven hong kong dollars per order and for the platform fees it will be the same as 0.03 percent with a minimum of eight hong kong dollars per order so if you're using my example of 100 units 10 cent shares which is $38,000 multiplied by 0.03%, that will come up to $11.40, which is above both the minimum commission fee of $7 and $8 platform fees, right? So in total, we will just take 11.4 multiplied by 2, that will be 22.8 Hong Kong dollars per trade. And that is equivalent to $3.95 Singapore dollars and effective rate of 0.06%. So it's slightly cheaper than Mumu because Mumu is 0.07%, but don't forget Mumu allows you to do odd lot trading. So that's a little bit of advantage there. I think the difference is not much, right? 60 cents difference. And if you haven't signed up for Tiger yet, you can use my referral link down below to get one free stock from Tiger, depending on what is their promotion at the current point of time as well. Next up, we do have Interactive Brokers or IBKRA in shop which is my preferred brokers for US stocks. But how about Hong Kong stocks in comparison? So IBKR charges you around 0.05% of trade value. So if we take 0.05% multiplied by 38,000, that will be 19 Hong Kong dollars or $3.30 Singapore dollars, which is effective 0.05%. And you have to note that for interactive brokers, you actually have to trade one bot lot size, which is 100 shares. So there's no fractional trading. So if we compare it with Tiger, is 0.01% cheaper than Tiger, but 
compared to Moomoo is 0.02%, but without the odd lot trading advantage. One more thing is that for interactive brokers, I'm using the tiered rate, so I'm not using the fixed rate. You have to change your commission fee structure from the fixed to the tiered rate in order to enjoy cheaper commission fees. And also interactive brokers has removed the $10 monthly activity fee, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. So you can use my referral link down below to sign up for interactive brokers as well, just to support me on my channel. Lastly, I will talk about Poems Cash Plus because this is the newest broker that I explored in 2022 right so if i look at poems cash plus the minimum commission rate is 0.08 percent multiplied by the trade value of 38k which gives you 30 dollars and 40 cents hong kong dollars and that's equivalent to 5 dollars and 30 cents singapore dollars which means an effective rate of 0.08 percent and that is significantly higher than the other brokers that i discussed earlier right mumu is 0.07 Tiger is 0.06 and Interactive Brokers is 0.05. So I won't consider to use Poyun's Cash Plus to trade in Hong Kong shares, but I would use Poyun's Cash Plus to invest my SRS in the S27 S&P 500 index, which you can sign up using my referral link down below to get some free sign up gifts as well. All in all, I felt that only two brokers come up top both Mumu and Interactive Brokers. Now, sign up for Mumu to get that one free stock first. And then if you prefer an odd lot trading size, then go with Mumu because even though it's 0.07%, the difference in absolute amount is actually not much. And for some people who want to trade at a smaller trade value size, I think Mumu will be really advantageous. And then for Interactive Brokers, if you are comfortable in buying 100 units each time, which is a value of around 6.6 thousand Singapore dollars, which is quite a huge amount. Um, then you can go with interactive brokers, right? It's just 0.05%, which is 0.02% cheaper than Mumu. Otherwise, I think that just go with the current broker that you have now in the essence of time. If you really do want to take advantage of the market downtrends, right? You really don't want to waste so much time opening another brokerage, going through various verification and approvals and submitting documents and even funding your account. All this takes time. So go with the broker that you have first, then slowly go and apply for the other brokers if you want to take advantage of the time. So that's for trading Hong Kong stocks. But if you want to look at trading US stocks, which broker should you go for? Then you can refer to my previous video on comparing stock brokers for the US markets, right? With that, thank you for watching. My name is Christopher. This is Honey Money SG, steering young adults to financial independence.